before you slip into unconsciousness. Hey folks, um, I am continuing my NixOS series, and today I'd like to declare at least partial success on getting Python compiled on NixOS. Um, <clears throat> Gotta be honest, it took me, took me a while. Um, so in the last video, I showed you that NixOS, um, in order to really compile anything, you have to you have to kind of be in this Nix shell environment. And the Nix shell uh, essentially causes things to be on your path, like GCC and LD and, and, and other stuff, that are wrappers that put the right flags um, into the environment, into the GCC calls and the, and the LD calls and the AR calls and everything that, when you are compile stuff. And um, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's pretty neat. But um, it does mean that you can't just download Python, compile it uh, without knowing something about Nix shell like you can on other operating systems. So there's that. Um, but let's take a look uh let's untar this python i think this is the most re most recent stable python as of the recording of this video okay so inside of here we have a tarball that i downloaded from python.org and again i said i said we can't just you know on other operating systems we might be able to do something like that you know but we can't do that now we have to actually invoke this nick shell and Nick Shell, you'll have to excuse me. I have not had time to um, figure out which which of these is actually required. <laughs> but this is the command that I'm using. I'll put this in the um, in the description below. Uh, this says start me a Nick Shell with packages gc lib unistring lib idn to bash tz data zlib zlib dev reline reline dev et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I imagine half of these are not required. This was me just flailing, but it works, so I'm using it. So we can see that we're in a next shell now because we're not in Z shell anymore. We're we're in bash, and we have this next shell colon in there. And now we we should be able to configure this thing, uh, and it should find more more stuff. So let's uh, let's configure. Uh, this thing and we'll put it inside of the same directory here. Uh, let's call it pi three five ten something like that. And right. <clears throat> do 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 do. Yeah, ooh, nothing more exciting than watching configure go. <clears throat> okay. So, um, at this point, we have a Python that is ready to be, to be compiled. And if we just compiled it by typing make, it would indeed compile, and we could install it. It just wouldn't have uh, some of the optional, quote unquote, optional modules that aren't really so optional these days, such as like Hashlib and SSL and Readline and, and, and other things. So <clears throat> um, the last video I showed us, uh, you know, I, I sort of made one thing work, which was Zlib, uh, which is the compression library, you know, an optional Zlib module. Uh, and I did it in a way that was not really kosher. I, I actually edited the setup.py file inside of Python. There's actually a uh, sort of approved way to do that that's, that's uh, uh, been handed down from Python of, of your, um, and that is via a setup.local file inside of the modules directory. And <clears throat> the setup.local file actually has it's kind of it's kind of like it's kind of like a 
like a, a GCC, the, the beginning of, of, of a GCC. Uh, so it's kind of like you type GCC and then the rest of the line that's in here. Um, eh, sort of. <laughs> it's, it's even stranger than that. But um, basically, what, what this line says here, this, this, this line on setup.logo says, build me the zlib module using this C file and include, sorry, uh, as a library, I want the, the libz library. Same thing with readline, use this, use this file, I want the readline library, et cetera, et cetera. And then, you know, you can actually have multiple C files with the SQLite library, and you can actually have include stuff in there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think the only thing that I don't build as a result of this setup.local is DBM. Nobody uses DBM anymore. I'm not building, T you know, I am building TCanner. Uh, GDBM, no one uses GDBM. Absolutely no one. Uh, NIS, sorry, son. It's over. Uh, curses panel, I don't even know what that is. And the rest of the stuff I build. So we do build BZ2, LZMA, TKNR, Zlib, Curses, SQLite 3, Hashlib, SSL, and Reline, and um, C types down here. Uh, so <clears throat> in order to do that, you know, we just copy this file into the setup.local. All the trouble was actually figuring out what needed to go in this file, which you didn't see. That was just me hacking around. Um, so copy the setup local to uh, Python to the modules directory. And now it's configured already. I type make. <laughs> okay, so it stopped compiling. And at this point, we can invoke it even though we haven't installed it. There's a Python available in the current directory. And we can see, did we get zlib? We did indeed. C types. Hashlib. All that stuff. We got all that stuff compiled. And as far as I understand, although maybe some corners of those various things don't work, um, I think they, as far as, far as I know, all the, all the stuff in this, inside of those things works as intended. Uh, if you find out different, let me know. And now we can do make install, like so. And this is a dumb place to put this. I didn't mean to put it here, but that's where it installed to. <laughs> installed to a subdirectory, a source directory, but you get the idea. I, was, I, just, I just configured it wrong. But um, bin python 3, yep, we got read line. Yeah, oh yeah. oh yeah, and we can do bin pip3 install, uh, let's say tox, and we can upgrade pip, and do all the normal stuff that we're used to, and uh, you know, this is uh, just like any other Linux system, this is not controlled in any way by NixOS. This is completely imperatively defined, and this is like data on your on your system. Nix knows nothing about it whatsoever. <clears throat> and I believe the reason that it works is, as a matter of fact, let's, let's, let's exit out of here, and we'll go into here. Um, the reason that this works is that all the, all the, the, the stuff that Nix does to, uh, as a matter of fact, let's take a look at, let's, let's take a look at what LDD says about Python. Oh, I have no idea what it's going to say. Hmm. 
Okay, so LDD is, is it's telling us what is what what Python is dynamically linked against. Uh, Libcrypt. So there is a non-zero chance, probably pretty good chance actually, that uh, Python will stop working if any of these files goes away. Uh, see, two one twelve. This is kind of news to me because I thought it actually, the way I was reading the um, the, comp the compilation stuff, I thought it actually linked it with our path, uh, meaning it's statically linked it in, but these are dynamic links. So, yeah. It's not ideal. It's not ideal. Your, your Python might just stop working all of a sudden because you're, you know, you upgraded something uh, on the system and and Nix doesn't notice that your Python depends on it because it's not a Nix thing. So it uh, it garbage collects that particular thing. That would be that would that would suck. Um, let, let me show you just something that's that's interesting while it's while it's compiling or you know you can you can look into it in your Nix shell. Um, if you do something like this, if you type in Nix debug equal one and then type make. Uh, you can see what it's doing under the hood. Uh, if it just does, doesn't anything, it didn't do anything. So let's do um, make clean. And next debug you want to make. So you can see as it goes along, you know, extra flags after whatever, uh, and extra flags before. So it's telling you what the, the flags that it's putting on the GCC command line there and does that for LD as well. Um, I found that interesting. <laughs> uh, it didn't help too much in actually figuring out what I needed to do, but at least you get an idea of how it's, how it's working, how the, how the wrapper scripts are working. But, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, like I said, it's, it's not ideal. In an ideal world, you do exactly what Nix does, which is create an X package that has Python that downloads the tarball and compiles it and declares dependency on the things that it depends on and all that stuff. Uh, but this is this is a way to get going in a system for a system that uh, that uh, is not Nixified and has other uh, another workflow, which is all of them. <laughs> you know, it occurs to me that I did I've already been been down this road before. And uh, I found this link. Uh, it's called Python Build Standalone by a guy named Greg. And he has a bunch of setup local files for various architectures, distributions, et cetera, et cetera, that should build um, Python completely statically, uh, if, if you care. I don't particularly care uh, that, that some of these things got built uh, with dependencies on dynamic libraries. But if you do care, that is a good resource to go after. Um, yeah.